Harry and the guinea pig. Harry was a white dog with black spots who liked everything about his neighbourhood except the neighbour's pet guinea pig. One day, the guinea pig came over to play but did not go home. Harry was not pleased. The children gave the guinea pig all kinds of new toys. They fed the guinea pig special treats and they gave her lots and lots of belly rubs. No one had rubbed Harry's belly all day, not even once. Harry didn't like the guinea pig getting all the attention. Suddenly, Harry had an idea. He needed to be more like the guinea pig. First, he tried to look like a guinea pig. He squished his ears down and hid his tail. He twitched his nose, but nobody noticed him. Then Harry tried to act like a guinea pig. He did tricks like the guinea pig. He sat up on his back legs and he balanced on a ball just like she did. But the children still didn't notice Harry. Harry tried to play inside the guinea pig's tube. But he was too big. Harry watched the guinea pig run in circles around her pen. He could run round in circles too. So Harry ran and ran and ran until he got so dizzy he fell over. Then Harry tried making a little nest for himself out of paper, just like the guinea pig's nest. But the family scolded Harry for making a mess and sent him outside. Nothing Harry tried had worked. The guinea pig was still getting all the attention. Then Harry heard the children say that show and tell was the next day. The children always brought Harry. He'd do all his tricks and everyone would forget about the guinea pig. But on the way to school the next day, Harry discovered that someone else would be joining them. Oh no, the guinea pig was going to show and tell too. What if the children forgot all about him? Harry had an idea. Before it was time for show and tell, he would climb into the cage with the guinea pig. Then everyone would have to notice him. So when no one was looking, Harry pushed open the door to the guinea pig's cage. But he just couldn't fit inside. Then Harry realised he had a much bigger problem. The guinea pig was gone. Where did the guinea pig go? cried the children. They searched everywhere. Harry felt awful. He didn't like the guinea pig, but he never thought the guinea pig would escape. Harry knew what he had to do. He would use all his special detective skills to find the guinea pig. He sniffed around the empty cage until he found the guinea pig's scent. Harry followed the scent to the art room, but all Harry could smell was paint. Harry squinted his eyes and spotted some tiny blue paw prints leading out to the playground. But the rain had washed away the guinea pig's paw prints. Even that didn't make Harry give up. Harry perked his ears and listened very carefully. He thought he heard tiny squeaks, so he followed the sounds to the library. But when Harry pushed some books off the shelf to see if the guinea pig was hiding, there was a crash and he still didn't find a guinea pig. But Harry would not give up. He sniffed again and smelled the guinea pig. So he followed the scent out of the library and into the cafeteria. But the cafeteria was full of too many smells. All Harry could smell was lunch. Then from across the cafeteria, Harry heard a big, loud crunch. Crunch, crunch, crunch. 
there was the guinea pig. Harry howled until the children came running. The children clapped and cheered. You did it, Harry. You found the guinea pig. And when it was time for show and tell, the children told everyone about the guinea pig's adventure and Harry's clever detective work. That night, the neighbour came over to pick up the guinea pig. The children were a little sad to say goodbye, but they knew she would be back to visit another day. Harry decided it would be fine if the guinea pig visited again, but for now, it was good to get back to his old tricks. I love you, buddy.